Hey guys, it's Jeff with washerbearings.com. Hey, um, today I'm going to talk about another popular appliance, and you probably have one or even two of these things laying around your house, and, uh, and that is a microwave oven. I had a customer recently who had an issue, and uh, what was happening was they put the food in there, tell it to turn on, and it would look like it's doing its thing, but the turntable did not move, and the heat did not work, so they did not get any heat. Now, I just want to stress, when you're working on appliances, you have to be careful with the high voltages when it's plugged into the uh, you know the wall, and um, I just want you to be careful if you're going to work on anything. In most cases, you can do it with the power off, but you know sometimes you have to have the power on to see what it's doing. And uh, those times you got to be really careful. You have to respect the energy that's available there. And um, with that, we got the safety out of the way. And also, I'd wear safety glasses if you're doing anything that could, uh, you know, have something fly up and hit you in the face. So let's go on. Uh, again, it's, uh, we have no heat and we have no rotation on the turntable. Let's take a look at the schematic. That's where we'll start first. Okay, here's our schematic, and what we've got is, um, this is our power cord up here, 120 volt input, and then it goes to an EMI filter, and the white, the neutral goes to this side, and then the hot, or the black, goes down this side. So what we want to look at, you have a thermal switch here, that's normally closed, and then it comes down to the secondary switch, and then you got your turntable motor, and then you've got your heat which is your magnetron. So if you look, you know, you got your turntable motor and then your magnetron all right here. So I would suspect a break in power right here. So we want to focus on that. And um, let's go take a look at the door latch. Okay, here is the uh, door latch. And basically it's a piece of plastic like a bracket and it has three micro switches. This one, this one, and then this one. This one's the one that we were looking at for that break, the secondary interlock switch. Now, I did go ahead and just go ahead and check all these with the ohmmeter. Uh, the connectors are kind of tricky. It's like a, a double back connector. One side's longer than the other because it has to go in this terminal over here. So uh, they're kind of tr tricky to get off. I, on this long side here, if you put a screwdriver in from this back side, a small screwdriver, that's how I got these off, and it's kind of tricky getting a screwdriver in there sometimes. So you just got to be careful getting those off so you don't damage the switches. And on these two switches, I got the normal, uh, you know, what I, what I expected when I pushed the little actuator button. Now, when I got to this switch, I noticed that this inside lead here had heat. The terminal was melted. The, the plastic had signs of melting, and you can see the wire was like real stiff right there where it had a lot of heat. So, um, you know, that, that's probably the problem. And uh, so I went ahead and took off that connector. It was kind of tricky because it's kind of welded on. And I finally got it off and then I did the ohmmeter check. And then when I, when I clicked the actuator down, I got the closure like I should. The ohmmeter went low impedance. And then as I kept going down with that actuator, the switch opened back up, which would be the case when the door is closed. So that's you know, definitely the problem. So I had them order another switch. It was about $4. And also they had an issue with the front plastic panel. That's where the keyboard and display is. They had some little tabs broke. They go on the side and they go into little slots, you know, sheet metal slots. And so they wanted to go ahead and replace that part too. So they ordered the door panel and then the switch. It was about $40, $45. And uh, so we put it all back together. And I had to put a new crimp on here. I had to cut this connector apart. And then I had to put on a 0.187 inch quick connect. And they sell those in insulated and non-insulated varieties. Uh, my particular one was non-insulated. But you can use either. It's pretty. It's all in the open right there. So you don't have to worry about anything touching. So um, I didn't have any concerns with that. So, but... A lot of quick connects are 0 0.250 or a quarter inch, and that would probably work in a pinch, but ultimately you ultimately you want a 0 0.187 inch quick connect on there. And then uh, let's go take a look at the, um, the switch. 
Okay, here is a close-up view of the, uh, here's a plastic terminal. You can see where it shows signs of heat and melting. This is the actual terminal. You had two wires coming from over here, and I had to cut that off and put the new terminal on. And you can see where it got really hot. And so what happened was, when this thing was on here, this junction was getting so hot, and that heat was going into this terminal, and then it finally caused the switch to malfunction. So uh, by putting a new connector on the new switch, and I just didn't use this piece here, uh, that fixed the problem. The microwave is now fully functional. Okay, let's go back to the schematic. Um, a couple of things you want to look at when you're looking at a microwave. There's a couple of things that can go wrong, and I've had um, issues with the um, the control board. You know, the control board controls this relay here, and then that will control the power to the high voltage circuit, which drives the magnetron. Well, if this relay is bad, and the microwave is eight years old, ten years old, it's going to be. It could be hard to find an exact board. So in that case, there's not much you can do about it. You know, the manufacturers uh, stop making those replacement parts eventually and uh, stock them in a warehouse. And once they're all gone, they're gone. So uh, in that case, you might have to bite the bullet and scrap the machine. Uh, another problem I've had is this rectifier right here. When this thing fails, that will cause this magnetron to not power up. So I've had a case where this device actually blew up. And there was just two leads sitting there, and the plastic barrel was gone. It just, and the customer heard a snap when it blew. So it's always good to get clues like that when they're operating the microwave, and then when it stops working, did they notice anything? You know, maybe they had a power surge or something, and then that could help um, you know narrow down what the problem is. So just keep that in mind, and also you want to check all the connections for bad uh, you know crimps or you know. Look for signs of heat on the terminals. That's always a good thing, too. So, uh, just again, remember safety. You don't want to get shocked while you're working on the microwave. So, we want to be real safe about it. And if you have any questions, you can send me an email. And also, if you have any problems with your, uh, you know, your washing machines, um, I, you know, I, I like to uh, help people fix their appliances. And that keeps them out of the landfill. And it gets more years out of them. So again, this is uh, Jeff Hartman with washerbearings.com. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you learned something about microwaves.